So in this lecture, I'm going to give you some examples about the applications of the complex numbers in solving the ge plane geometry problems. So the first example is the treasure problem. In this problem, we consider three points in plane A, B, and C. The objective is to use these three points and to arrive at the position of the treasure. So we have a treasure map indicating some instructions. Uh, so the instructions is as follows. We start at the point A, we walk from A to B, we, ma we make a right angle with this line segment and we continue at the same distance AB and we arrive at the point for example D. We do the same thing we start from A walking to D to C make right angle from AC we turn left this time and we continue at the same distance AC and we have at the end a point like E so this is equal to this one and this is equal to this one and the objective or the treasure position is in in fact the midpoint of the line segment DE so the question is to identify this point without having any access to the point A so suppose that these are three these are trees in fact and this tree is uh, we have not access to this tree the, the, the area around this point is destructed so uh, the problem is that if we can identify the point T without having access to the point A so the I will solve this problem with two different approaches the approach, the first approach is the approach using the complex number numbers theory. So in this approach, I consider, for example, uh, the vector BA and the vector BD in this side. In this side, I consider the vector AC and the vector C. The vector BD is simply the counterclockwise rotation of the vector BA around the point B. So this vector corresponds to ZA minus ZB. This vector corresponds to ZD minus ZB. And we will have that ZA minus ZB times i is equal to zd minus zb or times i or times e to i pi over 2 which is exactly equal to i so i have this vector i multiply this vector by i and i have the counterclockwise rotation the vector corresponding to the counterclockwise rotation of the vector corresponding to ZA minus ZB and simply and uh, uh, in the same manner I'll have ZC minus ZA times I is equal to ZE minus ZC because this vector the vector Z the vector CE is ZE minus ZC and this vector or the vector AC in fact is ZC minus ZA and the multiplication of this vector by I will give us this one so if we using these two equations I can calculate the component uh, ZD and ZE but the objective is Z of T because I'm 
searching this point. We know that ZT, because T is the midpoint of the line segment DE, so ZT is Z of D plus Z of E over 2. So in order to calculate this value, we should simply sum, calculate the sum of these two equations. And so I have this one and this one will cancel out. I have ZC minus ZB times I is equal to ZD plus ZE minus ZB plus ZC. And finally, I have ZD plus ZE over 2 or simply Z of T is equal to ZB plus ZC over 2 plus I times ZC minus ZB over 2. And we, here we will see that the component corresponding to point Z or the coordinates corresponding to the point uh, sorry T is independent of the of the coordinates of the point A of the starting point so I've, I do, I don't need to to know the component to know ex where is the point A so using this equation I can identify simply the point T because if I consider for example B and C like this and if I consider without loss of generality I consider the origin here at B so this is B or O ZB plus ZC over 2 is in fact this is correspond to this point, the midpoint of B and C, and the vector corresponding to this is this vector. So if this is L, for example, the M, this will be L over 2. And ZC minus ZB over 2, the vector corresponding to this complex number is exactly this vector because ZC minus ZB is this one and over 2 is exactly this one. So if I multiply this vector by I I will have the counterclockwise rotation of the vector BM which is exactly this vector. So I have a vector BM prime for example and this lens is L over 2 this one is L over 2 and Z of T is simply the sum of the vector corresponding to this two com these two complex numbers so this is T so the position of T for example is in the is located in the perpendicular bisector of the line segment BC because T belongs to this line and this line is the perpendicular bisector of BC and with a distance equal to L over 2 with this line segment. So we can identify the point T without using the coordinates of the point A. Another funny uh, method to solve this one is to, is to use an arbitrary point as the starting point because Z of T is independent of A, of Z of A. So the starting point can be any point in this plane. So for example, if I start, if I consider A is exactly at B, for example. So the starting point will be here 
we uh, we start from this point we continue to this point and we turn right and so the point d b and a are here we start from this point because this is a we go to to c we make an angle we turn left with a right angle and with the same distance and this is e so the point t is exactly in the middle of be or de and the solution is ex is exactly independent of the choice of the point a so this time if i consider c as the starting point so a is here for example first i walk from a to or c to b i turn right with the right angle and i continue with the same distance bc to arrive the position d so t will be exactly in the middle of the line segment dc so the choice of point a has not any influence in the position of the treasure the second approach that I'll use to solve this problem is the vector algebra so if I redraw the, the points A B and C like this I'll have something like this this is the point D and finally the point T in this solution if I consider the real plane X and Y like this and the origin, I suppose that the origin is the midpoint of B and C. So if I consider the lens BC as L, this will be L over 2. And similarly, L over 2. So if I consider the vectors OA, OB and OC I'll, I can write that OB is minus L over 2 I I is the unit vector in X direction I hat J hat is the unit vector following Y direction and this will be if I consider this as z coordinates k hat will be in this direction so i have the vectors ob and oc as minus l over 2 and plus l over 2 times i and if i consider the vector oa as ax i hat plus a y j hat because I don't know priori the, co the components of the point a so in general I can write it as this I have I can write these two equations a b and a c are simply o b minus o a and o c minus O A. So minus L over two I hat minus O A is I A X I plus A Y J. So this will be minus 
L over 2 plus AX I hat minus AY J hat and this will be L over 2I minus the same thing and the result will be L over 2 minus AX I minus AY J now if I consider the vectors CE and BD I can <coughs> determine these two vectors using the cross product uh, concept because for example in this side this is the vector k hat if I calculate the cross product of a b and k hat using the right hand rule I have the vector bd so I can calculate this vector as the determinant of a hat i hat j hat k hat minus l over 2 minus ax minus ay 0 which are the components of the vector ab as we have calculated here and k hat is 0 0 1 so the result is minus ay i hat plus l over 2 plus ax times j hat and <coughs> similarly I have this relation in order to calculate the vector CE is k hat cross product the vector AC so if I consider AC I multiply AC cross k hat using right hand rule I have the vector CE so this will be the determinant of this matrix IJK 0 0 1 L over 2 minus AX minus AY 0 and the result will be AYJ sorry AY I hat plus L over 2 minus AX times J hat Now, if I consider, for example, this is O, the origin, X and Y. This is E, and this, for example, is D. Now I can calculate the vectors OE and OD because OE or OD, for example, is simply OB plus BD OD is OB plus BD I've calculated already these two vectors and the same here I know OC and CE so the resultant the sum of these two vectors is simply OE so <coughs> this will be minus L over 2 minus a y i hat plus L over 2 min plus a x j hat the vector o e will be o c plus c e which is equal to L over 2 plus a y i plus L over 2 minus a x J. So now that I've calculated these two vectors, and if I consider the vector sum of these two vectors, or the vector, for example, OT prime, I know that this vector will will uh, be will, in fact, the vector. The line segment DE 
will be divided in two segments with equal sides so that dt or this line segment will, will be exactly equal to te so the treasure point is exactly the midpoint of the resultant or the sum of the the two the two vectors so the sum will be ot prime and the middle of the sum is exactly the the middle of these two points and is the treasure position so <coughs> ot will be o d plus o e over 2 will be simply equal to l over 2 because this one and this one will be cancelled out the same l over 2 times j hat so the point t has not a component following x direction it's exactly in the y axis so we have identified with the concept of the vector algebra in order to identify the position of the treasure so this is an this problem is an interesting application of the complex number <coughs> theory in order to solve some uh, problems in plane, plane geometry. Uh, thank you for your attention.